So her funeral is tomorrow. She she did the business at St. Paul quite a bit. And so, you know, let's just remember those families in our prayer. Okay? They're going through a lot of grief and we just need to strengthen them through our prayer. <clears throat> let's start with the call to worship. God the Father, God the Faithful One, calls us to worship. We have to worship God who is steadfast. God calls us to trust in the One who is love. God's love and grace are sure and trustworthy. Let go of those things that will only fail you. We offer them up to God and put our trust in God alone. And let us sing our hymn of Christ, the life of all the living. What 
do you think, Simon, he asked, from whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children are exempt. Jesus said to him, but so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drop of coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. And then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Gethsemane, 
I told myself I wasn't going to let him down ever again. I tried. I really did. I was the only one who stayed. Well, it was me and the younger Zebedee kid, you know, the sport, John. But you know, nobody pays attention to kids. Anyway, things were going all right until that one maid came up to me and asked if I knew Jesus. Suddenly, all I felt was fear. Instead of feeling that Jesus loved me, I thought about how he couldn't help me now. He couldn't even help himself. So I denied ever even knowing him. Now, for the rest of my life, no matter what I feel, I will always feel ashamed. Simply, he said, come. 
Can you imagine the fear that Peter had to have? It had to be a little bit of pulsion to get out of the boat. We don't know if it was a step or two or three. But what we do know what Scripture tells us that he lost focus. He stepped out of the boat because Christ called him to come. And when he looked at everything that was going around him, instead of focusing on Christ, he started to sing. Not in the scripture, but the next verses. Christ reaches out his hands and grabs him up. And he tells Peter, Be of little faith, do not be afraid. So we can take that story, and I, in some of our studies, Peter failed at that time. But I beg I to differ. Did the other disciples get out of the boat? Did they take a chance? Did they believe enough to take that first step even? At least Peter gave it a shot. At least he gave it a shot. At least he stretched himself to see what was possible. In the second story, Matthew, we find the disciples with Christ in Capernaum. And they run along this tax collector. The two drachma temple tax collector. And the two drachma temple tax was for anybody that was 20 years or older, had to, any male 20 years or older had to pay this tax to support the temple. And who was the temple built for? The Sanhedrin, the chief priests, the Pharisees. And those people were full of pride, right? And so now Peter, and they asked him, doesn't your teacher pay the tax? And of course, now maybe it was impulsive, maybe they had been by that way before, but Peter just blurts out, yes, he does. So then he runs back to Christ, and before Christ, before Peter could even say a word, what do you think, Simon? Peter asked him. From who do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own children or from others? And Peter actually answered him, from others. And I had to look this up because I was kind of Peter's or Jesus' response. And the children are exempt. Well, as I studied that phrase that Jesus spoke of, the implication of that statement is this. This implies that Peter and the rest of the disciples belong to God's royal household, but unbelieving Jews did not. I think the lesson in that was Peter goes rushing to Christ and Christ never preached against the laws of Moses, the laws against the temple. He didn't preach against that. He actually supported it in many ways. The lesson to me is that Christ is somebody that will get taxed. We don't want to, and it says here in the scripture, we don't want to cause an uprise. It wasn't time yet. Jesus wasn't going to you know, it wasn't time for Jesus to be pulled off and taken to Pontius Pilate. So we'll just keep it calm, we'll pay the tax. How did Jesus, how did the money come from? Unbelievable story. Never even really was there until we just read it again today. He tells Peter to go out fishing, and the first fish you catch, there's going to be a coin in that bad boy. Give that to them to pay the tax. So what does Jesus teach us? We'll pay the tax. God will provide that for us. So, Peter goes to Jesus. Jesus does a miracle. We all know all the source of everything is from God. Jesus turns to God to provide the tax. Keep everything home for now. So I think these stories are, what did Peter do and how did Jesus respond so far? And in the last scripture, chapter 26, and we all know how that's now. Jesus isn't given the conscious pilot quite yet. But Jesus is being, he's already been turned over. And they were spitting on him by now. They were punching him. It says in the scripture that he probably was blindfolded. Because just before the scripture, he was getting punched and hit. And I'm sure the disciples were terrified at that point too. Again, fear comes in. And just before the scripture, hey, tell us, you know, if you're the Messiah, prophesy, who's hitting you? So, I mean, these people were mean and vicious, and the disciples saw it, and they started scattering. 
This is Peter's story here. The young lady, serving girl, you also were with Jesus of Galilee. Peter denied, I don't know what you're talking about. Then he was recognized again by another servant girl. This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. And he denied it again with an oath. This fellow, or oh, I don't know the man. And a little while later, he was recognized again. Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. And he called out curses. Can you imagine how man he was now? Because he's already denied him twice. Once with an oath. Now he's raining down curses. And he swore, I don't know the man. And all of this, Jesus told him was going to happen. And then he remembered Jesus' words. Before the rooster crows, you'll be 93 times. So his pride from earlier came back upon him just now because his spirit took over. And his impulsive nature, he didn't think, he didn't, he didn't gather up the strength it took to say, no, I'm, I'm going to stand strong right now. But his impulses were run from hills. His pride came, his earlier pride came back upon him. I think that as I studied this scripture, and if you think about the life that Peter led, he failed. He failed so many times. He knew the source of his strength, but he denied Christ. He lost focus, kind of wandered away. And he was just overwhelmed with everything that was going on around him, that he took his focus off Christ and he became afraid. But what do we know that what did we know that Peter did? I mean, let's face it. We're all here right now, and we all have our own personal stories of past failures and past triumphs. A lot of people along the way that were so happy that got us there. And Christ got Peter there. After Christ was crucified, Peter went out into these very hostile places, scary places. If you don't think he wasn't facing this fear while he ministered to the Gentiles and the non-believing Jews on his mission trips, of course he was. He was facing fear, but he overcame it to the point where he was crucified. And when it came time to be crucified, he wasn't full of pride anymore. He was so humble that he wanted to be crucified from my studies of Scripture. He wanted to be crucified, not in the same manner of Christ. He was crucified upside down, it was said. He wasn't worthy. He was very humble. He wasn't worthy to die the same death that Christ died, not in the same, in the same way, but not in the same manner. Just wasn't. He was a very humble man. He had to be very strong. I mean, you could have wished for a different way to die for your Christ, right? Something quicker, less painful. He's a very inspiring person. Despite all the things along the way that 